So you've probably done some keyframe animations on some titles in Premiere Pro, but later on in your edit, you're like, I actually wanna make this a little bit longer because it's too short. If I extend out this duration of this lower third, the keyframes still remain here at the same point. But what if I told you there was a trick that you can do so you can make these keyframes move with the duration change? That's what I'm gonna show you how to do in today's video. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. <laughs> I want to thank Envato Elements for sponsoring today's video. You can use my link below to get 70% off your first month to access unlimited video assets for your next project. So when you're creating titles, you should go up to workspaces and make sure that you're in the captions and graphics workspace. So that way you have the essential graphics open. Now the essential graphics is where you can build titles, shapes, and import graphics. And you can use the essential graphics panel with your toolbar here to create your text layers, with the type tool, or you can click on the rectangle tool and hold and you can access the ellipsis, the polygon, and you can also use the pen tool to actually click in the program monitor and create your own shape. So for this, let's create a basic lower third. I'm going to go to the type tool and type out lower third. And you'll notice that it has a background behind it. If we go down in the essential graphics panel now, you can see under appearance, there's a section for a background. If I uncheck this, it goes away. So you can also add some curvature to your background and play around with the padding and you can control the opacity of the background. You'll also notice that now in our timeline, after we created the title, there's now a graphics layer. And if you go up to essential graphics, we also have a layer for the text that we created. One thing that people don't know about the essential graphics panel is that you can actually import videos as well as graphics directly into the essential graphics panel. When we click on this new layer icon, it actually pops out of view. And here I can import a graphic from the file. In this case, I'm going to import my regular gal logo. But notice that it didn't import another layer in the timeline. That's because this one graphics layer contains all of the elements inside of the essential graphics panel. Now we can move them around and resize them. The first way to do that is by going to the selection tool or pressing V on your keyboard and you can move around these elements and scale them up or scale them down. But moving it this way is very arbitrary, right? There's no precision. If I want it to be exact, what I can do is turn on snap in program monitor. So make sure you have the program monitor selected and then press shift command semicolon. And now when I move these elements around, I now get this snap and you can see it's lining up with the rulers. If you don't see your rulers, you can press command R to make them appear. Same with the lower third. If I want this to be exactly in the center of the gal logo now, you can see it snaps into place, which is just convenient. So here I'm gonna add some spacing to the front and to the back just by adding regular space bars before and after. Another thing to note is that the Premiere Gal logo is on top. It works just like Photoshop. So if I was going to move the lower third on top, it would be covering up the logo, which we don't want. So because we wanna animate this together, I'm actually going to select the logo and use responsive design to pin it to the lower third. And I'm going to pin it to the left and to the top because I'm gonna have it animate up. And if I'm going to change my mind and have it animate left to right, that's why I'm pinning it to the left also, because now if I select the lower third and I move this to the left, the gal logo moves with it. And if I move it up or down, the gal logo moves with the text as well. That's why they have this pinning option here. So now let's add our quick animation. So we can go over here, we can pull our playhead over slightly. We can click next to position to create our first keyframe we can click next to opacity as well because I want to animate the transparency. And now let's go back to the beginning and we can bring this down off frame by moving this vertical position. And I can lower the opacity down to zero. So now it animates up very slowly. We need to increase that. So what I like to do is actually make my effect controls window a bit bigger and then I can lasso and select the end keyframes and bring them in closer. And because I want it to be smoother, I can right click and change it to ease in. And then I can lasso and select the starting points 
and ease out. And now you can see it's a curved motion, so it'll be more smooth. Another thing that you might wanna do is stagger the transparency animation so it becomes fully transparent after the animation is complete. So now let's repeat the same thing, but to the out animation. A few moments later. So we have our in animation and we have our out animation. But now, what if we want the animation to move with the change in duration of the graphic layer in our timeline? This is where we can click on this little blue handle here and drag this out to basically encompass this intro animation. And then we can do the same to the out. And basically these are animation handles that contain the keyframes. So now in the timeline, you can also see these handles. If I make this layer bigger, you can see that these white areas here, these contain the animations. So if I make this shorter, the animations move inside of the handles. If I make it longer, it moves also. So this is a really, really good approach you can take to any animations that you now make inside of Premiere Pro. So that way you can save them and you can use them over and over again and change their durations. So now we can right click on this and export as a motion graphics template and we can call this basic lower third and save it into our local templates folder. And now it will save into our local templates folder, which if we go to the browse tab, bada bing, bada boom, it is right here, basic lower third. So now I can always drag this into my timeline and reuse it in future projects. You'll also notice when you click off the motion graphics template and then click back on it, there's a section called responsive design time. So you can see the intro and the outro duration, which are both 23 frames, it's almost one second each. If you wanna change that with precision, you can always click here and edit the times. But I actually prefer to go straight in here and adjust just using these handles here. Pretty neat. Another way you can use the Essential Graphics panel is by going to the Browse tab and you can import pre-made templates. You can see I have a bunch of motion graphics templates that are pre-loaded here. And motion graphics templates, the file extension for that, is .mogrt, and we often call them mogerts because of that. I often get more complex motion graphics templates that I can't design in Premiere Pro from Envato Elements. So if I click on video templates, I can search for mogurt, for example. So let's try this typewriter mogurt. Let's click on this and we can download it. And from the download, you can see there's actually nine typewriter mogurts inside of this one download. So I can actually press shift and select all of them and drag and drop it into my essential graphics browse tab. And now you can see all of them are here. Let's try title 08 and let's drag and drop it into our timeline. And here's what it looks like. So now when we go up to essential graphics, you can see that it looks different because this was designed in After Effects, not in Premiere Pro. So here you can adjust the content of the text, the font, the color, the text speed, so how fast it is. If we want it to be a little bit slower, let's reduce this down. And now the type is slower. So there's a lot that you can customize here. And the typewriter effect is something you cannot do inside of Premiere Pro. So it's better to use a motion graphics template from After Effects. So you can do the same thing with all of these motion graphics templates from Elements because it's unlimited. You can download as much as you want to try out. And once you import it into your essential graphics panel, you can have it there to use in future projects. And with Elements, you can use their assets in any type of project. And by assets, I also mean their stock video here, which they have a huge library. There's also music, as well as sound effects, graphics templates if you need to create mockups, and much more. So you can use my link below to get 70% off your first month of Elements if you wanna try out some of their Mogurts. All right, now let's jump back into the video. Another thing that a lot of people have been asking about in Essential Graphics is a spell check. Well, they actually have it, but it's not inside of the Essential Graphics panel. It's actually in the text panel. And from the graphics tab, you can see all of the elements that contain text. And if there is a misspelling, it will be underscored in red like this word. So if you go up to the ellipsis, go to spell check and make sure that check spelling is enabled. So here we can see that there's a mistake and we don't have to go to the essential graphics to correct it. We can just double click right here 
and fix it. And it's updated automatically in the timeline. So the text panel will save you a lot of time, especially when you have a huge timeline with so many text elements, just turn on check spelling and it'll help you out. Here's another tip. If you want it to learn a word that you use often, for example, Premier Gal, or let's see, 4K. If you use these type of technical terms, what you can do is you can actually go in here, go to spell check, go to spell check settings, and you can enter a word to learn. So try out the check spelling the next time you're working on a project with lots of text elements in your timeline, and you'll see that it'll save you a lot of time. So let me know if you want more text and title animation style tutorials here on the channel by giving this video a thumbs up as well as leaving a comment below on what type of animations you want to learn next. If you want to check out some more motion graphic template style tutorials, you can click right over here, and over here you can click to check out my Patreon and my new toolkit. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, keep creating better video with Cal. See you next time. Bye! Rock and roll. Let's go!